So, show me. Thank you so much for coming. Let, let me get into your party affairs. How I'm mean, hearing from some of your friends in your party that you want to be the party national chairman. Okay. Now that you are here today, I can ask you straight up: Is that true? Well, let me put it this way: um, I was I've been out of the country for a while. I went to an engagement in Washington, and I think that a lot of young people started to make that push. But my position has been very clear: stability is more important than anything else. When you have the situation that we have on hand now, we must be very measured, we must be very careful, and we must not run into that consistent argument of thinking that our issue is removing the person in charge. We had the same conversation with Alimodi Sheriff. Then we ran into Makerfi. Then we ran into Secondus. Then we ran into Ayu. Now we're with Damagun. We cannot be a political party that keeps saying all the time that nobody is good enough to lead us. So I understand what young people want. They want a reform party. Some of them have heard a lot of my ideas on how I think things should go. So I'll just say, let's go a little easy on that. When the time is right, we'll take a decision on whether we should try ourselves in the ring. But if it's coming to the Southwest, then without a doubt, we are eminently, I am eminently qualified to say, I have the ideas to run the party, but I've told them we're not there yet. So that's that on So your friends are pushing. Oh, yeah, a lot of people. To the, the conversation party. has happened a lot. People yeah. feel that it's not enough for them to keep doing these musical chairs, looking for themselves and just pretending as if they can reform the party. Like, if we must reform... You know the interesting thing about the leadership of your party What's is that? that the only lucky person that has spent full four years, although he, he didn't complete yes, his full term, in secondos. Yeah. I mean, as much as he was embattled by, yeah. by the wave and all of the trouble, yeah. he seems to be the person so that's that that's my point exactly. The most stable, although very unstable in terms of the kind of wave that uh, came uh, against him. Sure. He left in the same month, although a few weeks before... The expiration of his no, term as a matter of fact, let me even correct you. They did a congress before the end of his tenure, but they waited until the end of his tenure before they swore them in. Mm -hmm. So, effectively, Secondus completed his tenure. He, he probably had beaten all the records. Of, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the since, thing is that political days, parties in Africa. The days of um, Bamanga took all yeah, the days I know. of. Uh, you know, that's what I've been trying uh, to. Uh, that's what, what I've been trying to rest, preach yeah. against. We cannot be a political party that says nobody is good enough for us. We can have our issues, we can want a lot of energy, we can want reform, but we have to have painstaking ability to wait through the time. Because if we brought all of these men that have been our chairman and put them like on a line, we'll find out that they've been different characters, different persons, different inflections, different possibilities. But it's not only your name that I, I don't up. care who else they are mentioning. What I'm saying is that... No, you, you probably need... will care. You know Who's why? That? Who are they mentioning? They've mentioned Senator Bukala Saraki. Well, I, I mean, that's, if, not, if, that's not central, is... if not central thinks that it is their inanimable right to be chairman all the time, then those of us in the Southwest can tell them, no, we don't agree. Some of us have put in a lot more than you guys have put in, and we want the party to be chairman in the Southwest. And if young people want me to be... Then we'll meet ourselves on the field. Oh, so if you are up against the likes of Senator Bukala Saraki, how would that play? You beat I'll Saraki. beat him. I'll ask him what he did in 2014, 2015 when they destabilized the party. I'll ask him what exactly was. I'll, I'll beat him. I'm sure of that. Mm, you have the backing of Atiku Abubakar. I know, eh? So this is where the challenge is. Atiku Abubakar is not that kind of party who likes to destabilize things. Mm -hmm. Young people are just gyrating. And my name is coming up. And so, you know, I'm very honest with you. I won't pretend as if I've not heard it. But what I have said to them is the same. Gentlemen, we cannot be a political party that gives the impression that people cannot finish their term. We have just, we lost an election, fair enough. We're still contesting that. Some guys are in charge of that NWC now. We can't give them Where time. Where is Senator are you? Well, I think that Ayu scenario is one of those scenarios that gives you a bit of a dagger in the heart. Do you think that that's the scenario around him perhaps uh, was one of the major issues that led to well, the I, 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 of the party I, I, I tell you this, I tell you this. There, um, in a political environment where the focus is victory, everybody needs to always figure out a way to reduce their immediate anger. And once you get into a situation where a political party is not able to see that the collective good or the corporate existence of everybody else, whatever it is that the agenda is, is bigger than individual agenda, then you will get the kind of results we got. I'm not even sure that perhaps if it had been any other way, we will not also have the same, another set of people playing the same set of rules because that happened in 2015. 
In 2019, we were a little bit more coercive. In 2023, you saw what happened. So basically, the PDP for years now, or even up till now, have been the university that produces everybody. Check, Akpabio, former PDP governor, former PDP senator. Check, uh, Suzwan, former PDP governor. Check, Nasir, uh, what's his name, Nasir, former PDP uh, in charge of FCT. Check, um, the guy that's in charge of uh, National Security Advisor, Ribadu. Do you understand what I'm trying to do? What I'm trying to say to you is that it is our burden to bear. We are the incubator of people's experiences and politics. And it is their right sometimes mm. to go elsewhere. And they have done that sometimes. You don't, you don't think the party is still living in the, in the, the past? Of the past. Well, I think, listen, Sheon, once there is a legitimacy challenge for anybody that has won in a democratic setting, you cannot say that. For if you have a voting map of 93 million and someone is sitting in the villa with just about 8 million, that already invalidates the legitimacy. And if everybody is in arms, going to the court, screaming and shouting, and you're measuring, you're a media person, you measure the inflections on social media in the, in the political space, you have to understand that it's not an, it's an unusual time. Even with all of all the things said about President Mamadou Buhari, at least he came to that bar, he came to the villa with about 15 million votes. Mm. You're coming in with about eight. You have no bragging rights. Mm. Whatever you do, you have no bargaining rights. And we'll have to wait to see how the calls go. So for me, I think that, yes, the People's Democratic Party of Nigeria must now evolve into a tribe. So if it can evolve into a tribe, it will no longer be a platform where, she, what can anybody do to make, stop making you an Ikiti man? It's too late. Mm -hmm. You may be angry with them. You may not be happy, but you're going to be an Ikiti from now till the end of Even if you change your nationality, if you get to America and they make you, and they will always say, the show of Kimbalo in Nigeria of Ikiti. We need to get the political parties to that level where members who join, I understand that they have joined the political party and they're like, kind of like stuck with their tribe. But hey, the constitution allow people to move. And when they do move, it has consequences. All right. So you're planning reconciliation. That's what the leadership is doing. We're speaking reconciliation. That's the word I rather. I'm not saying we're planning reconciliation. We're speaking reconciliation because reconciliation is a constant item on the agenda. You cannot, even if you win an election, you still will be speaking reconciliation. Except, of course, you think that a political party is a closed organization where new people cannot come in, where people that have free nerves cannot be managed, you will have to always be constantly in a state of reconciliation. And I can say for free, those who have just a minimal 8 million votes in the villa as a political party would do well for themselves to do the same. They've not even been as stable as us. In the space of how many years, how many chairmen have they had? They've not even had a ch I mean, come off it, man. You tell your national immediate past chairman to resign, and you don't call it Congress, you don't do anything. Some people just sit down in a room and just say that they've got in new chairman and new secretary. We're not like that. PDP is a political party. They are the, ne the neck meeting. Forget that. Our processes work. We don't do things like that that way. We go through the pain of building the consensus and the capacity of that person to call himself a national chairman through the ranks. Yeah. And we do conventions. But usually you always disrupt it. That's the history of well, the party. But let, let's so move away from it to some national... Yeah, let's do something much more interesting. Issue. I mean, what, is, uh, what are you hearing uh, within your party mm. as the, uh, in relation to the Tinobu's administration and the handling of the state of affairs? You know, I'm a Yoruba man. And ironically, I've known Ashadju for years. So there must be some kind of soft spot there. But, and I have tried very hard to say that, let's wait until 100 days. Why? Because there's a tradition and a culture of let them take 100 days to, you know, settle down. Not that. our own tradition. No, it's not it's our American ours, but, Yeah, I'm just saying. Culture, yeah. Even the democracy you are practicing shows mm -hmm. American democracy. So please, there's that culture that you give them 100 days to settle down. But unfortunately for this administration, they have done quite a lot of things that could be considered as serious missteps. And they've done them in a brazen, in a hurry manner that people are now forced to say Give no. Give an example of that. I'll tell you. You cannot come to public space on the day you are inaugurated and say you're removing subsidy without thinking of the knock-on effect. Once you've done that, 
and you now start thinking about what are we going to do? Is it palliative? Is this? It? That's not how to really govern. You cannot come and say you are floating the naira. You are very sure that the naira and the dollar will come onto you know equilibrium, a market force and black market. This is this is this is. Come on, man. You opened up by saying the the money is now about nine hundred. That's not how much it is in the in the banks. So the arbitrage you were trying to run away from, you're still stuck in it. You cannot come into public space and begin to give the impression that your business in government is just to make sure that you can tax the people more, you can burden the people more, you can shift the responsibility of government to figure out who are those people that mismanaged our subsidy regime, who are those people that did whatever it is that you're claiming is the reason why we have this problem. You're basically pampering your friends. Yeah, Balatinobu's government has almost become a government that bullies the weak, but gets bullied by the, the, the thugs. I mean, come on, Sheung. Where in the world would you expect them to take a young woman just coming up in life? I've Googled her a bit, very passionate about their party. Put her, they had about from February to day to make up their mind who they wanted to appoint. And the girl has to come on, the woman or the lady has to come on to the point where she's supposed to go in and then she's told her name is not there. And you, you don't, you, you kind of like figure out what, what, what kind of people are this? You didn't know 24 hours before, you didn't know 48 hours before, and these are the same people who seem to be incapable of saying, oh, this particular guy, we can see all of the challenges he has, and we're dropping him. So we see that there are former governors all passed, there are the former senators all passed, and it is the weak in the society that is carrying the short end of the stick. That's who they are. Again, you can't run an economy like Nigeria pretending as if you don't understand that the mass of our people, the majority of our people, are greatly impacted by poverty as it is, and that anything that makes them incapable of even feeding themselves because inflationary trend is going to spike up is a no-no. And then... Guess what you have done to yourself to even make us look stupid? You have opened your mouth to say, I'm going to go into Nigeria and I'm going to do something. You are easing on, you are easing on it's on you can't keep. Sunday has come and gone. You have made us look like a laughing stock. Some small boys in Nigeria are going to be sitting down there and be laughing at us. Like, hey, hey, hey. Nigeria said they are coming. We're waiting for them. They've not come. They've shut down the this is a, shut this, down the This is not Nigeria. This is an ECOWAS stand. Listen, man. Which why the do you, president who do you think is, is the leader who do you think of is, ECOWAS. Listen, Sheon. Do you know what the United States of America is within the sub-region? Do you know what Germany is and France is within Europe? Do you know what Nigeria is within Africa? Do you know what Nigeria is within West Africa? West, yeah, okay, we can be nice on other, we can respect sovereignty. We can't be going around to fool ourselves. Our responsibility as a government and as a leader in the sub-region is to be very guarded and very, very measured in our utterances, especially when the entire northern border of our country is with our friends. So you and disagree neighbor. with the position of ECOWAS being led by President Tinubu on the manner of our I think, approach I think, on I, the cool situation, I think, what would you have suggested I think, otherwise? I think anybody who understands anything about statecraft will know that you cannot put the cat before the horse. You cannot put strong arm and strong force and strong threat in front before you start shipping your diplomats there. That's not how these things are done. And it is coming from the background of their I know more than everybody concept in Yoruba land and Lagos state, and now they're coming into a bigger space where they have very little experience, and they are not taking the pain to gather the right kind of people and the right kind of thought processes around the table to guide them. Nigeria has never been embarrassed in ECOWAS. Right now, we are about to be embarrassed. And if we then decide that, okay, we want to be brave, and we want to brave, I don't want to send troops there, we're just going to go out there and embarrass ourselves even more. And besides that, can illegitimacy be fighting illegitimacy? What do you mean by you that? You cannot have a legitimate problem in your country where people are saying they don't even accept your election. People are in court. You have not even come out of it. People are saying you got only barely 8 million votes. People are saying you guys slighted races. People are saying the election is not free, fair, and transparent. The perception is not right. And then you're going to another man's country to tell them, oh, we want you to do this, we want you to do that. Are you afraid of... Do you know the legal test for... Uh, election. Uh, That's why we're in court. Just That's what I'm saying. 
do you know the test is for the judicial process? Yeah, well, we're, we're so process. until we are out so, of it, you can't wear the medal of legitimacy. So don't you, you get? So until that, you don't want to, the president should just sit in his bedroom and uh, wait until the Supreme Court rules. No, I've not told him not to form cabinet. I've seen the kind of people he's putting in his cabinet. I laugh at him. A few brilliant pieces, but a few excessively recycled characters. If you come in this country and you want to do a paradigm shift, and your paradigm shift includes former governor, come on, man. If your paradigm shift removes the same... So oh, if you are a former governor, it obliterates your capacity to serve again in your country. She'll come Is that on, the man. case? She'll come on. There are 200 million people in this country. That particular party, the APC, has been in charge for the past eight years. Whatever mess they are trying to clean now, their party cost it, their government cost it. You can't come in front of us and start telling us or giving us the impression that the same or same are now the ones that are going to get out of this mess. So you're not impressed with the formation, the, the kind of team that the president is putting together? You know, I have looked at the people he's putting together. I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the fact that if I be honest with you, both of us are Yoruba men, that it's beginning to seem that our people are they're going to get best, the best of the cherries. And if you want me to tell you what, I can tell you the things we've gotten already and the things they're likely to, go, to get. What are those? Come on, man. We're in charge of customs. We're in charge of police. We're in charge of army. We're in charge of CBN. We're in charge of IRS. We're in charge of taxation. We're in charge of um, appropriation. She, um, have we become such a people that we can only be fair when we're talking about so, other so people? Are, so you, I am beginning are, to see a pattern that we're getting, all of the cream is coming to us. And, and what, we will, fair. what we will not accept from Buhari, who was even fairer to us than he was to his people, we must be brave enough to say this is not the right way to go even for us. We're not going to suddenly become a parochial people who insist that all of the things in the country, Yoruba people are the Listen, Cheo, does it not prick your soul that you are putting 10 in one place, 9 in one place, 7 in one place, 5 in one place, and you're giving the Southeast Igbos 5? And I can tell you for free, Cheo, there is no mental capacity, validation, education, authentication that you are looking for in the world that you will not find with Igbos, either in Nigeria or in the diaspora. Why would you not start telling me that you can get 10 from the Northwest, you can get 9 from the Southwest, and you're telling me that you can only get 5 from them? So these are the issues. And then made worse is, you're very, very happy when it comes to telling the people you have to do taxes, you have to take more revenue, you have to push them more, they have to endure more, they have to pay more for petrol, they have to pay more for money, and guess what? It has taken you all of your 60-something days, and you have not been able to come up with a clear palliative that people can understand that works. When you wanted to make it much more irritating, you went to the extent that your Senate president is sitting down at Pabio, laughing and gesticulating and fighting about, takes the gabble and says, uh, they say they are not the, the people that are going to be let the poor breathe. Yes, the poor should be asked to laugh. She, mm, is that a reflection of what our people are feeling now? How do you summarize the uh, about 70 days or so of President Tunubu uh, in, in the saddle? I'll uh, first of all say some of his hand, the people he speaks, Bajabia Miller, as his name, what's it called, chief of staff, hugs the media too much. That's not the role of a chief of staff. I've seen his former special advisor. So you, you, you're thinking that, <laughs> just for a moment, you, you, you're thinking that the chief of staff need not be seen and heard. Is that what you're saying? Maybe you should read some of the books of the countries that are created chief of staff. A chief of staff is not somebody who is hogging the media, who is insisting it has to be in every picture. That's not how that role is. That role is this role that is almost like the strong man behind who stays there and makes sure that the, everything that the president wants to get is done, not some bad way or kind of thing. Look at his, uh, his um, special, former special advisor of media, who is now being designated as a, as a, as a minister. Have you not been in this country since 1999? Where did you ever see addition or the guy that was there before, or even Rabati? Where did you ever see them, the, the Buhari or their president or the ones or, that were Jonathan or even with the passenger, they're standing to take pictures, they're the ones doing like this. Shion, 
I'm a Yoruba man. These guys are really embarrassing me. I expect them to tidy up their statecraft. I expect them to get their act together. I don't expect them to create some kind of battle. Everybody's just laissez fair and all that. And when someone, somebody did have this conversation with me before they were picked, I told him, I was telling the fellow that, look, if the president wanted my opinion, I would have given him two people that could have been his chief of staff who would do the job very well. And the guy asked me who. I said, do you want my opinion? I said, yes. I said, if they're not so angry with you, because I'm Muslim, you can be a good chief of staff. And if they hate him so much, they can take Fashola. Those guys would have brought the kind of things you need to the table. What's what's what they're bringing? What man has of rape? Has he ever been an executive? Has he ever been a governor? Has he ever been a minister? Can't you see what they're doing? So we are not ashamed for them. I am ashamed for all of us. They, I hope they settle down quick. And I hope we can begin to see precisely what they want to do. And I hope for whatever is good for him, he takes himself out of a potential campaign that is going to pit the West and Russia close to our border. Nobody who knows what he's doing jumps into a battle that can easily touch your own soil. And please, please, before you start telling me about ECOWAS, the last time we were in Ecomog, Nigeria paid most of the bill and Nigerian soldiers did most of the bleeding. Let me get um, uh, our, our closing uh, moment with uh, Mr. Shagun Shawumi. Um, uh, that also will say, give Palatinobu some time. But do you think that he has the capacity to do well by Nigerians? You know, um, I know him. And I know him well. I've always said to him privately, even before he became the president, that, look, I do not know the mess you will meet. But you know, so you know him that deep? I know him that yeah, deep. Oh. I do not know the mess you will meet, because you're not president before. But I have a belief that you're going to leave the place better than you met it. That's the charge. And therefore, for someone who has known him for as long as 1994, I have a duty to start calling out the alarm bells when I think he's going to end up you know, he's getting a lot of applause from abroad. Listen to me, man. The, the, the question if you look is... At, if you look at the entire sub-region, you look at Mali, you look at Niger, you look at Burkina Faso and all that. Can't you see what's going on? I was in Washington last week at the invitation of the Congress. And one of the conversations we had there, and this is important, was they were saying a lot of things. They wanted to designate Nigeria a, a country of particular concern because of the body count from all of our crises. And when it was my turn to respond, I didn't go there trying to throw the country under the bus. I was very clear that democracy uh, is beginning to shrink in Africa. And one of the reasons why democracy is shrinking in Africa is that capitalist democracy, PPP, this, 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 is giving a lot of our people, leaving them behind. So we're creating a system where the vast majority of the people are expected to be applauding those who are in charge. And we need to reverse that and look at what's going on. So for Ashad Bolamet, Tinubu, President Tinubu, he doesn't want sympathy. He ordered for the job. He begged for it. He cried for it. He said the Miloko, he was if even bit entitled about it. No one is going to give him a slack on the job. He needs to go fix his house. He needs to get them to be more serious. Right. He needs to look at the issues properly. And he needs to understand Nigeria is a multidimensional, multicultural country, yeah. and it's a young country. All right. You can't keep bringing recycled people and telling us that's the best you can find. No, that's not the best. Thank you, you so much. Find.